today I want to talk about makeup brushes. Now I don't want to um, get into every single makeup brush in existence in this video. This is more of a video geared towards beginners. Those who might just be beginning their makeup collection or who are just now getting into using makeup brushes. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of brushes here and I have another in front of me that has quite a bit more brushes in it. So this is by no means me going through every single brush I own and explaining why I have it and how I use it. This is more of a, what I feel would be a good starter kit of brushes for a beginner. And I will try to describe each one of these the best I can, how I use it, and why I think these are good for beginners. So let's start with foundation. Now there's a few ways you can apply your foundation. First of all, you can use your hand, of course. Your fingers work pretty good for applying foundation. Other ways you can use is a foundation brush. Now this is what a foundation brush will generally look like look like it's synthetic and tapered here and you just use it to blend in your foundation now I don't usually use this brush for foundation too often my personal preference for applying foundation is using a sponge like this one right here now what you'll do with a sponge like this is you will dampen it you don't want it to be soaking wet so you're gonna wring out um, the excess water till it's just damp and when you dampen it, it will expand a bit. As you can see, this one here is totally dry at the moment. Um, it does have some stains on it because I use it. But what you will do with this, after you dampen it, is you will dip it into your liquid foundation and you use it to just bounce around your face, blending in and applying your foundation. And why I like these over a brush, it all comes down to personal preference. So I would suggest if you haven't tried either to try both and just get a feel for what you personally prefer on your skin. But another reason I like the sponge is you have a pointed tip. So it's really good for getting in those little tiny crevices and like around the lips. So that's why I prefer a sponge. Okay, on to the next product that I would apply, and that would be my concealer. And of course, you can use your fingers to apply your concealer. Another excellent option, especially if it's for blemishes and you want to pinpoint it, is a concealer brush, which basically it just looks like the foundation brush, only smaller. And this is great, like I said, for your blemishes to pinpoint those. Now, I usually don't use a concealer brush under my eyes. What I will do is I will use my finger, my ring finger to be exact. And the reason you want to use your ring finger underneath your eyes for your concealer is because your ring finger is going to have the least amount of pressure. And you don't want to use much pressure at all underneath your eyes because the skin there is so thin. So you don't want to be tugging on it any more than you have to. So that is how I do my concealer under my eyes. But the brush is great for blemishes and just pinpointing areas on your face that you want to use concealer. Okay, and then the next product that you would most likely use would probably be powder and this is a powder brush and they are generally fluffy and just really soft and a bit large that way you can buff in your powder all over your face and just get it a nice matte finish if that's what you're going for but if you don't use powder then you obviously don't need a powder brush so really if you know, you just want to take this with a grain of salt. If you know you're not going to use powder, then you don't need a powder brush. But if you're going to wear blush, a blush brush comes in handy. And the reason I don't like using a powder blush, a powder brush for my blush is because it's a bit big. So this right here is an angled one. You can get them that are not angled, but I like this one because it has more than just one use for it. I can use it for my blush, but I can also use this brush to do my bronzer around the perimeter of my face 
And if you are into contouring, you can also use it for that. Like right here in the hollow of my cheeks, I could do some contouring with it. Another option you can use this for that I've used it for is just take the um, very top of it and barely dab it into a highlight and then just go over the your cheekbones and the bridge of your nose with a highlight. So this brush has more than one use for it, for me anyway, and it takes up less room. So moving on to eyes. Now, if you're using powder eyeshadows, these are two eyeshadow brushes that I feel are crucial to have. You can obviously add or take away just depending on what you're going to be doing. But I like using a eyeshadow brush that is a bit fluffier and larger. And the reason I like using one like this is for all over, like from the lash line up to the lid, because you can apply your base shade really well like that. And it's also good for blending out those edges, which is always important. And the other brush I feel that is super important to have is a crease brush. And they are generally tapered like this and they're still fluffy, but they're just tapered and usually a bit longer. And they are great for getting into your crease right here to put generally your darker eyeshadow shade in and you can just blend it out. And you wanna do that in small circular motions or what I call the windshield wiper motion, which is back and forth motion. So this brush gets right into that area really good. You can also use it on your lid if you're just gonna add like a small um, highlight shade so you can just dab it right in there. It's small enough to do that with. Now, if you don't wear powder shadows, but you prefer cream eyeshadows, then you're gonna want a brush that's more like this, which looks similar to the concealer brush, a bit smaller. It's synthetic tapered bristles, and this is better for cream brushes or cream shadows than this type of brush because this brush wouldn't really pick up a cream shadow very well, whereas this one would pick it up better and you could just pack it onto your lid better with a brush that's like this. So overall, I feel like with these brushes, you could get pretty much any look you want. Obviously, you could add or take away from it. Like I said, if you know you're not gonna wear powder, then you won't need this. If you don't wear blush or any of that, you won't need this. So just figure out what products you wear and then you can go by what brushes you think you would need. But these right here I feel are great for a beginner and a great starter kit for pretty much anyone. Of course, there are other brushes out there that you could add to your collection over time, such as a contour brush, a kabuki brush. A kabuki brush is like this one right here. It's basically like a powder brush, only a bit smaller. And I like to use one like this for my um, loose mineral foundation because I feel that I get a more concentrated amount of it and I can buff it in better. I think I get a better control over it just because it doesn't have the long handle like this one. Like this one's good for powder because you want a light touch. Whereas I think this one is really good for mineral powder foundation or just any powder foundation because I feel like it's easier to control. Maybe that's just me. But I feel like a kabuki brush is more or less optional that you don't really need it unless you're using products that are specific to that. Other brushes that... I feel are optional to add to your collection are an eyeliner brush and this one just so happens to be double ended you get this little short end right here which is really good if you're going to smudge shadow underneath right here or just on the top of your lash line and this one has this end which is an angled end which is good for if you're going to use a gel or a cream liner and you're just going to draw that on at the top so this comes in handy if you're going to use eyeliners like that. But if you're using a pencil liner and you're not really going to utilize a brush like this, then obviously you're not going to need it in your collection. But 
overall, that's what I have for you guys that I feel would make a good makeup brush starter kit for pretty much anyone. And they're brushes that I use on a daily basis that I enjoy and I'm going to be putting a link down below to where you can get these brushes and the sponge that I mentioned. They are all from Avon and as a disclaimer I want to mention that I am an Avon independent sales representative. However, I purchased all of these brushes with my own money and this is my honest opinion of these products. Like I said, I use these pretty much on a daily basis depending on what products I'm using. So that's all I have for you guys right now, and you can probably hear the train in the background. So I'm sorry about that, but I hope you all have a wonderful day, and God bless. Bye!